Hi everybody, my name is Saara. Today I'll be speaking on a very personal, deep, and triggering subject. If you are triggered easily, I recommend that you wait to watch this until you're more comfortable defining your triggers. So first off, I just want to start by saying this video is not meant for educational purposes. It's not meant to expose or bring anyone down either. This is simply just to tell you all about my experience with molestation and how it's helped to shape me into the woman I am today. I will not be mentioning specific names for the safety and guidance of the other person. Um, so it first started off over a year ago, sometime in the summer. Um, I'm sorry if I keep looking down, it's just because I literally wrote everything out and if I didn't then my mind would just be a whole bunch of jumbles and it would just be a shit show. <laughs> So forgive me for not looking at the camera like every second, but I need to like get this out. It needs to be released. Um, I need to be heard and I just want to make sure that I'm presenting it in the best way possible for you all. Um, like I said, it first started over a year ago sometime in the summer. Uh, my stepfather came and visited me in my room one night while everyone was asleep. Um, I'm assuming they were sleeping as it was pretty late. It was around 11 o'clock at night. Um, mind you, the place that my family and I were living in was kind of large. We had a, a long hallway separating my room from the rest of the house. Um, he wanted to speak to me about something. At first, at this time, in that moment, I had no clue about what would have happened. Um, we always used to talk about everything and anything. He was like a best friend to me a father figure, a protector, a mentor, and someone who would have guided me in the right direction when needed. He sat down next to me and started confessing his true feelings towards me. My mother and him had a fallout a few years prior to this. I think that's what might have caused the shift in how he felt about everyone. Um, at first he started to say how much he loves and cares for me. I thought I already knew this, uh, so I was just in utter confusion, like, okay. <laughs> um, I didn't understand, I didn't understand at that moment what was going on or what was going to happen. Um, he then continues to talk about his childhood and his experiences, all of which I was also confused about. Um, I just didn't know where he was going with the subject. But I knew for sure one thing deep down is that his eyes were so saddened and dark. Like, he had no connection to his inner child, hope or gaining any happiness at all. All I saw in his eyes were pain. I honestly don't even know how it all started, no matter how hard I try. I just knew that he wanted to kiss. He asked me if he could kiss me. Um... Looking even more confused than before, I hesitated to say no. Um, he asked again, and I kept saying no. Um, at this point, he was just starting to get very persistent, because this is just the type of person that he uh, is. He's just very persistent, and when he wants something, he's going to strive his best to get it. Um, I just, I just wanted him to go away at that point. Uh, I was pressured into saying yes and I felt horrible. It's like this person I confided in was emotionally holding me back and I felt scared. I felt scared and terrified and I was frozen. Um, he aggressively sat me on his lap and I did not budge but I fidgeted in instead. Um, I could smell, uh, weed, beer, and cigarettes all throughout his skin and body. I felt super uncomfortable and struggled to get off. I asked where my mother was at that moment, and he claimed that she was in their bedroom sleeping. Um, I thought about her and wished that in that moment she could come and get me. Like, I wish that she would just walk into the room at the right time and and pretty much come save me, come rescue me from experiencing this. Um, I sensed that he felt my fear as he kept pushing me to do more 
stuff, completely violating the time, words, and space. He wanted to uh, engage in sexual activity with me. Um, he wanted to have sex. I was scared and frozen up. And I always said no until I didn't. Um, now, we did not have sex, so I didn't say yes to that. Um, he said he could pleasure me down there, and I claimed I didn't want it. He found his way to my shorts. His eyes kept looking back and forth, um, like he just wanted to do something, and I was just completely frozen up, dude. I was, I know what was going on. I know what to do, and... I was just scared. Um, he asked if he could pull down my pants and I just wanted him to go away so bad. And I knew that he wouldn't stop until he he got what he wanted. Um, so I let him and his tongue, his tongue slithered out and landed on the top of my vagina. And this was it. This, this was the moment I couldn't take anymore. I couldn't do it anymore and I felt way too pressured and I just wanted it all to end. Um, I pushed him off and said that if he, that he needed to leave and go immediately before I called my mother or someone else into the room. Um, I think that scared him and so he just left and I was just left there in my room feeling so confused and stuck, embarrassed, weak. I felt like I was out of control. I felt like I didn't have any control. Um, and most of all, I felt like a child. I felt like my inner child was being attacked. You know, I had never been in a situation like this. I didn't know how to respond uh, in a positive way and I didn't know how to protect myself at that moment. Um, there were there was times when he would flirt with me and I would try and play it off by flirting back, acting as if I wasn't hurt. Um, I was scared that if I said the wrong thing, I would get thrown out or abused or accused even of being a liar. Uh, but deep down, I felt so burdened inside. Um, there was a couple of instances where he addressed the situation and one where he even came to me with just the towel on, covering his lower half. Um, so, I said, uh, there has been a point where he did apologize, and I took it as sincere, and I thought it was sincere, but it wasn't. Uh, because months afterwards, he complimented me um, in a dress that I was wearing on the way to one of my friend's parties. And I knew it wasn't just a regular compliment, it was more like a I'm checking you out, you look good kind of compliment. Um, I just buried this, I just buried this, I buried this experience so deep inside my heart and soul that I had no idea how detrimental this was to my state of mind and being. I didn't talk about it for months afterwards until one day my then boyfriend knew something was wrong with me. Eventually he got me to explain what was bothering me so bad. He was shocked. Um I don't I don't know exactly like what we were talking about, but we were on the phone and um I don't know, it just came out uh a few weeks went by and uh, he said he couldn't be with me anymore because of what happened. He left when I felt like I needed someone the most. Like I really, I really needed someone to be there. I really needed someone to help guide me and just let me know that I wasn't going through this shit alone. Because when you hide stuff so, so deep into your heart, you, when it's brought up, you don't really know how to respond and... And when you're feeling alone, it just makes things kind of ten times worse. Um, eventually, I told my mother about it. At first, she was shocked uh, and didn't know if she believed in me or not. Um, 
they had been married for about 18 years. About 18 years, and although he was my stepdad, I, I saw him as a real dad. There was never any, you're not good enough type shit because he wasn't blood, you know? Um, but they were married for about 18 years, but the more that I told her about my true feelings, uh, the more she started to believe me from the moment from that moment on, everything in the household uh, just changed. Um, nothing or no one was the same. I do have siblings living in this house uh, with me, and it worries me that something might happen to them. I have no idea. Um, at this time, when, when this happened, I was about, I'd say, 19 or 20, and my stepfather was about 40. So I was not a child but I was definitely in adolescent years um, and still still growing up still finding me still learning how to be an adult you know what I mean um, but uh, I don't know he was just he was he was a great father to me he did everything that he was supposed to do um, but this experience changed everything in me. It changed how I saw people. It, my hope was disintegrating. My trust was completely gone. Um, my views about men changed and how life is. I started to see things in a more pessimistic way. Um, and most importantly, myself. I lost myself. I didn't know, like, why I couldn't, why I couldn't, protect myself. I didn't know why I didn't have the strength at that moment to say no and and just stop it all completely. Growing up, he was a fighter and um, fighter as in like he was trained in boxing. So I was scared, obviously. I felt like he had the pounds, the strategy, the experience, just everything on me. And I didn't want to get uh, like physical um with that being said i was just i was unable to feel happy and comfortable and safe and beautiful in my own body for a long time i couldn't stand to be naked or see myself i felt trapped in my own body in my own mind i am healing now and it took me so much to be able to make this video so i hope that if you're watching um you are being respectful because this did take me a long ass fucking time to build up the amount of courage and strength that I needed to, to make this video. Um, any mean compliments or any mean comments, just keep them to yourself, man. I'm only allowing positive feedback and loving experiences. If you have gone through something similar, even though it's hard, please speak up, because if you don't, it's just gonna fucking kill you inside. Excuse my language, but it's going to fucking kill you inside. It's going to destroy you. Um, you deserve to feel free, and you owe it to yourself. Like, don't let nobody take away your power or sense of self, and don't lose yourself. Um, if you need help and guidance and don't really have many people in around to confide in just call the national hotline for sexual assault at 1-800-656-4673 again this is the national hotline for sexual assault uh, someone will listen to you and the number is 1-800-656-4673 free yourself um you deserve to be happy and safe. Uh, and, and with that being said, I'm, I'm still in this household. Um, although it's not the destination where, where it all happened at, um, the person still lives with me. The person who committed this crime uh, is still living with me, or I'm still living with them due to the lack of resources at the moment. I ask that you all gladly donate to my GoFundMe channel uh, so that you can help me move out into my own apartment in space where I am more comfortable, um, 
where I can just be completely free and safe from harm. Anything helps and I would just so much appreciate it. A uh, dollar, two dollars, three, four, five, anything helps. Um, I thank you all for listening and hope that you can find the hope and strength that you need to move on. Um, and I thank you again for watching this video. I'm sorry if it uh, seemed kind of uh, mechanical in the way, um, like just reading from a paper or something like that. Technically, I am reading from a paper because if not, I wouldn't have gotten out anything that I wanted to in, in the manner that I did. It probably would have all came in jumbles. But uh, this took me a really long time to be able to speak about this. And um, you're not alone. If anyone else is going through this, you're not alone. And I know it's easy to feel alone because I felt alone for, I felt alone for so long. Um, but the type of person that I am, my spirits and my guides are here and, uh, I just want you guys to know that you're not alone and that you should speak up. You should always speak up. If something bothers you or if something's making you uncomfortable, please speak up. And um, if anyone is out there wondering if, uh, if the law enforcement has got involved, they have, but not much was done. Um, cops have a tendency to not really get shit done. Let's just be clear, let's just be honest. Not all the times when you when you call 911, they're gonna help or that something is going on, you know what I mean? Or someone calls 911 on you because you're speaking up or whatever the, whatever the case is, they don't always get things done in the way that's justice for you. You need to find justice and you need to get that yourself. And if you have to do it by speaking up, by posting a video, by making poetry, by sharing your, your experience, then do that. We all deserve justice. We all deserve love. We all deserve care. We all deserve to be nurtured. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. I'm doing that for myself. And I uh, just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, please donate to the GoFundMe. It would help so much and I would really appreciate it. Thank you.